Grab your instrument and practice as often as you can, every day if possible. Hey everybody, my name's Mark. Welcome to 2000 Hours of Banjo. If you are new here, my name's Mark. This is 2000 Hours of Banjo. It's a channel dedicated to tracking and documenting my progress in the first 2000 hours of learning how to play this instrument, the banjo, as an adult beginner with no prior music in my past whatsoever. The first hour I, I practiced on this instrument was the first hour I have ever done anything musical in my entire life. And there's two main reasons for this channel. One is to see if I actually can achieve some level of mastery after 2000 hours of practice. And two, if I do, if I can do it, <laughs> so can you. <laughs> 2,000 hours, where did I get that from? At uh, the internet. I went to the internet. When I got this instrument, uh, it was a gift from my wife at the end of 2022 as a Christmas gift. Um, I immediately looked up, it's like, well, how, how long does it even take to learn an instrument? And the wise internet told me, eh, after about 2,000 hours-ish of practice, you should be about intermediate, high intermediate level of competency you know, good enough to, you know, play with others and such. So, and that being my, my midterm goal with this, I said, okay, 2000 hours with the idea starting January 1st, 2023 to practice every single day for about an hour, which I have accomplished with some exceptions. There was a long, very, very long three and a half month period that I had to take off at the end of 2023 due to an injury to uh, one of my fingers on my fretting hand. And then, but besides that, I think I can count the number of days of practice I've actually missed on easily on one hand. It's probably been two or three times in the past. Uh, it's been over a year and a half now. So only two or three times have I actually missed a day unintentionally the other time that three month period was to allow my my hand to recover now what i want to do today is go over what i do in my lifestyle to help encourage me to continue to practice every single day because i will tell you even though i'm enthusiastic about this adventure there are days when i'm less <laughs> than enthusiastic about playing the instrument or practicing. So let me, without further ado, let's go into the six. Uh, I've got some placards here. So if I look down here, I'm looking at my little cue cards. Six, six and a half ish tips that I have that I follow that help me get in here and grab my instrument every day. First of all, actually, before I jump in, Go back to my last video, I'll link it below, where I discuss how even just five minutes a day is actually really helpful in practicing. And that will segue into tip number one, let's call it 1A, time related. We want to, or what I do is, even though I've told myself that I want to try to practice a minimum of an hour a day, on the days that I'm really struggling to get in here to practice, I lower that that barrier to entry to five minutes. It's like, I'm just gonna practice for five minutes just, as, just so I can say that I grabbed the instrument and I practiced today. Now again, five minutes is not chump change. You can actually achieve significant progress with only five minutes of practice if you, can, if you practice every day. But the idea is to lower that barrier to entry. If I have the mindset that I need to set aside a full hour I may not get in here and grab the instrument. Instead, I say just five minutes, I go and I grab the instrument and start practicing. And I will tell you that that mental barrier, lowering that mental barrier so it's not a barrier anymore really helps. And I'll also tell you, I've never practiced for just five minutes. Every time that I've come in here saying, okay, I'll just do five minutes, I end up putting in at least 20, 30 minutes. I don't think I've ever gone less than 20 minutes of practice. So it really does work in getting the instrument in your hands and starting to practice. Tip number 1B, also time related, is going to be to set a schedule, a daily schedule where you can build the habit that this part of the day, you do it enough, you, your body, your brain is like, it is, it is practice time. It's kind of like 
for those uh, that uh, like I do, and, and maybe this doesn't happen to everybody, but for those that wake up right before your alarm goes off in the morning, my body's programmed to get up at 4.30 in the morning. So at 4.29, I'm up a minute before my alarm goes off. So the idea is the same with this, where if you grab your instrument every day at about the same time, it, is, it just becomes habit, like brushing your teeth or waking up to do that thing at that time, which would be to practice. And it doesn't have to be a set time necessarily, like five o'clock or 6.30 or something like that. It could be after work. Like the first thing you do after work is you go in and you start practicing. Or the first thing you do after you eat dinner and do the dishes is to go and practice your instrument. And here's a tip that's gonna help quite a bit. You want to get everybody in your household on board with this practice schedule. So let everybody know, so everybody has the expectation, oh yeah, when Mark comes, from, comes home from work, it's his practice time. That's Mark's practice time. Or right after dinner, that's Mark's practice time. So let your spouse know, Let if you have kids in the house, let them all know that the when your practice time is expected to be every day. That does two things. That lets everybody know to kind of leave you alone to do your practice. And two, if you don't practice, it's like the shame train where you're going through the house and everybody's saying, it's like, are you skipping today? No practice today for you? And I was like, fine, all right. And that turns you around on your heels back into your practice room and start practicing. And that's a nice segue for tip number two, which is to have a space dedicated for practice. This is my practice space. Yes, I co-opted a part of my gym. So there's a little bit of a corner here that I carved out and made my music practice space. And this is where I practice probably 90% of the time. Yeah, sometimes I'll practice in the back office if my wife is trying to watch some TV or I'll practice in the backyard if I want some a little bit outdoor practice. But primarily, this is where I practice. And there's a couple of key things that I do with my practice space to encourage me to come in here and practice. One, I make it very comfortable. I've got my, my sweet banjo thrown. I've got my music uh, stand. I've got my instrument stand. I have a little table over here with my metronome and my tin that I keep my picks in and some other stuff and it's all comfortable, cozy, and inviting. The other thing, the other important thing, key element of your space is to have everything at the ready. I've got my, my tab binder here, my instrument in the instrument stand, not in the case, my tin of picks. The lid is hardly ever on it unless it's in the case and I'm traveling with my, my banjo. Everything is out and at the ready. Again, the idea here is that low barrier to entry. If I am running hard on time and I want to just, okay, get in there and just do five minutes, well, guess what I'm not going to do if I know it takes 15 minutes to set up my practice area. I've got to drag the, the instrument case out from underneath the bed, open it up, bring, bring the instrument out, set up a chair and stuff like that. It, it, it is disencouraging uh, and and you don't want, or dis, discouraging, <laughs> there's a word for disencouraging. Dis, it's discouraging. Uh, and it increases that barrier to entry when it doesn't need to be there. If you have your little space and everything is already set out, it, you're all good to go and you just show up and tune your instrument and off you are. And by the way, you don't need a sweet banjo thrown like this. You can get uh, cheap furniture like this little stool right, right here from Amazon for like 20 bucks or something like that but I do love my banjo throne. And I'm gonna to get to this in a little bit later, actually. Number three, tip number three, counting hours. Now that's the whole premise of this channel is counting the hours, but I found some encouraging benefits of counting hours that helps me practice. One is that it monitors my progress and helps me set expectations, which reduces frustration. And I'll talk about that a little bit more later. Um, if I've only got 100 hours or 200 or 300 hours of practice, then I know I'm still going to suck and so I shouldn't have the expectation of being any good. Even at 500, 600, I'm still going to suck at a lot of things. 
and that's fine. It's okay to beginner that sucks at it. Uh, as long as you know that at this point you're supposed to not be so great and that helps encourage you or reduces discouragement um, and frustration and helps you continue to practice. Point number two with counting hours, you can compare month to month. So if I got 30 hours of practice in last month, but this month I've only got 20 hours in, I can sit and think, okay, why did I get 10 hours less this month, less this month of practice? And I can figure out, okay, well, how do I change my lifestyle or increase the odds of getting 30 hours a month and staying away from, you know, 20 hours a month or something like that. So it's good on that metric as well. But best of all, it leads you into my tip number four, which is to have incentives to practice. By having an hour count, you can establish or set milestones where you reward yourselves yourself with incentives to reach those milestones. I have a very big milestone, right? If you've watched this channel before, you know that I've told myself and set myself, sorry, I'm hitting my microphone, set myself a milestone that if I hit 1,000 hours of practice, I will be getting myself a nice new Neckville banjo. So Tom, if you're watching, I'm coming for you because I think I just broke 600 hours. But your incentives don't have to be that big and they don't have to be that far ahead, right? You can set an incentive for every 50 hours or every 100 hours. For example, let's say every 100 hours of practice, you treat yourself and your spouse to a dinner at your favorite restaurant. Or let's say you have a bigger one. Let's say at, at, 200, uh, at the next 200 hours, you're gonna get yourself a sweet banjo thrown like I've got. And I know you may look at this, um, I don't know if you can see it from there, but uh, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's basically a drum throne. It is a drum throne, but I've co-opted it. It's now a banjo throne. Anyway, so you can get yourself a nice uh, piece of, of equipment or something like that to encourage you to get to that 200 hours or get to that next mark. And that is really, really helpful. Um, what, <laughs> so I used to mountain bike competitively. I do it more of a sport now, but this idea of counting hours and setting these little milestones is akin to what we call the rubber band method when you're mountain biking. When you're mountain biking and you've got this huge climb ahead of you, mentally it is defeating. So you don't consume the entire mountain all at once. What you do is you mentally throw a rubber band around a smaller, let's call it a yard stone because it's like only a yard or a few, few meters away, like a stump or a rock or some kind of feature on the trail. You throw that mental rubber band around it and you use it to pull yourself up to that, that uh, feature. And then once you reach it, you throw that rubber band over the next feature that pulls you up to the next feature. And, and over time, you get to the top of it. And that's the whole idea here. We are embarking on a years long, thousands of hours long goal or fee to learn how to play an instrument. And looking at that is quite intimidating. Use the rubber band method, count your hours, set these little milestones, reward yourself as an incentive, and that will encourage you to get to the top of that mountain. Not that with a banjo there isn't a top. You will find out from my understanding that the more experience you get, uh, you, will, you will still be learning. You'll always be a student, which is a good thing. But anyway, rubber band method, mountain biking, it all kind of fits in, doesn't it? Or maybe not. <laughs> anyway, tip number five, let's move on. Tip number five, get an instructor. Now, yes, having an instructor has face value and that an instructor is an, an experienced person that's gonna help teach you how to play the instrument, teach you how to play songs, and help with your progress and learning how to play in general. However, there's some intangible or secondary or collateral uh, incentive to having an instructor that will help you play the instrument more or practice the instrument more often. One is monetary, right? An instrument or instructor costs money and you don't wanna be throwing money away, especially in today's economy, right? So the best way to throw away money is to have a lesson, have that instructor give you drills to practice and then not practice them. So to prevent that waste of money, the best thing you can do 
is practice those drills as often as possible. That is you getting your money's worth from your instructor. So if you wanna make every dollar count from your instructor, practice as often as you can between lessons. The second thing, and we're bringing back that theme of shame, when you don't practice the drill that your instructor has given you, and I've done this, you feel bad about it, you feel shameful about it, and that doesn't feel good. But again, you can take that shame and turn it around to influence better habits and better practices and actually use that avoidance of the shame to practice more. So that would be those, this collateral benefit of, of having an instructor, the monetary reason and uh, incentivize not to be shamed in front of your instructor when it's obvious you haven't been doing the drills he's been giving you and it feels really bad. Let's move on to tip number six, which is let's try to have fun. I get it, practice is practice, right? Uh, drills are drills, highly repetitive, not very fun, monotonous. It is what pushes towards improvement, that's obvious, and there's probably a lot of studies about that, but repetition is key to improvement. But in order to continue to practice, to want to practice, some aspect of it has to be fun. So I encourage you during any practice, or every practice I should say, to have a portion of that practice set aside to just have fun. Play the songs you want to play, play how fast you want to do it, doesn't matter, noodle around, experiment with the instrument a little bit. Anything that's just not a drill, something that you like doing, something that is fun. All right, those are all my tips. You're gonna see if you listen through this again, that there's a couple of themes here. I think the two main themes here is one, we really wanna lower that barrier to entry that's going to encourage you to come in to your set space, grab your instrument and just get it in your hands. Once this instrument is in your hands and you start picking away, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, they'll start passing by really, really fast. You'll be amazed that, um, that promising yourself a five minute practice turns into a half an hour practice just like that. The other thing is do what you can to encourage the behavior, encourage the behavior until it becomes habit and remove or reduce as much discouragement as possible. So get the household on board, get your set time, get your set space, have your instructor, have your incentives, count your hours, and then have fun. And just as a last note, I know, like not all of us can do daily practice. You, you practice as frequently as you currently can right now, but try to implement some of these tips to see if you can increase it more so than what you're doing now. It doesn't necessarily have to feel be daily and don't feel bad if you can't do daily practice. Practice is practice. You will get better as you practice that it's guaranteed. It's when you stop practicing, it's when you stop progressing. But do, just don't feel bad as you can't get practice in every day. This, these tips are to help encourage more frequent practice. Yes, daily practice would be the ideal. It's a goal that I've managed to achieve and hopefully I can keep up but it doesn't have to be daily. Just try more often than you are currently doing. All right, that's it. I've got some practice to do. And I've got some more videos to make, honestly, because I did break 600 hours, so it's time to make some more videos. I will see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.